Let's learn how to build accordions in Figma Auto Layout. I think you guys can learn a lot about Figma Auto Layouts, building accordions, and this would be a great precursor to a future video that I'm planning to make, which is all about Figma components. So grab a mouse and keyboard and let's get right into it. Awesome, welcome to the Figma file. I'm going to walk you through each of these pages just to sort of go through what each of them contain just so that we're all on the same page and we know exactly what's going on over here. And as usual, I've included the link to this file right down below the like button. You can access both the .fig file and the original shared file that you see over here. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support really, really helps. So as usual, the title page is relatively self-explanatory. There's nothing really going on over here. Uh, other than that, we've got assets. Everything underneath assets is a Figma style token. If you don't know what Figma style tokens are, I do have a video and a tutorial on that, which I'll include a link to that right down below the like button as well. And let's just quickly go through this. We start out with a existing color palette that I've created. You can access the color palette right over here. So we've got ourselves the neutral, which are these three colors, primary, and outline. So the font I've chosen for this specific tutorial is Enter. This should just come out of the box with Figma, so you shouldn't have to download anything to actually get it. But if you don't have access to it, you can actually find this as a part of a Google font family, which I will include a link to that down below. For this particular tutorial, we're only using the two fonts. So we only have title, which is a 16 font size, 24 line height. And then we have the body, which is 14, 24. So again, 14 font size, 24 line height. Underneath that, we have uh, iconography. We're only using two different icons. we got arrow down and arrow up. Uh, and I've downloaded both of these arrows from the icon finder link that you can see over here. But I will also include a link to that down below as well. And the very last thing is our device frame. I've included two different grids um, within this file, one for desktop and one for mobile. You can activate and deactivate grids by holding down shift and pressing G on your keyboard. You could show and hide the grids this way, or if you prefer, you could go to the menu over here, go to view and then select or deselect layout grids over here. And that should do the exact same thing. Awesome, with all the assets out of the way, let's get to the actual design. Usually when I want to build a component, I start laying out every single element that my component needs. So let's think about our accordion. What does our accordion need? It needs a, uh, it needs a title. So I'm going to type in title. It needs some sort of a body or, or paragraph, right? So body section. And since we've already have created our style tokens, it's quite easy to sort of implement those uh, styles into both of these elements. So I'm just going to come over here. If you don't get a selector automatically, you might get this view. You could just come over here to this four squares, select them and select title. That would then change your title to that. Body is already selected, but you could select it in a, in a very similar fashion. I've got my body, I've got my title. Next, I'm going to assign a color to them. So the color that I want for my title is neutral 100. So I'm gonna select that. And the color that I want on my body is neutral, I believe it's 50. Yeah, it's 50, cool. So we have this. So what else do we have? We also need a control or some sort of a chevron or our arrow to indicate that we could open and close this accordion. And lucky for us, us, I've already sourced that for us within the assets and iconography section. So I'm going to come over here into my icons and I'm going to grab both of these items. I'm pressing command C. I believe it's control C on windows to copy them. And I'm going to go back to design and command V for me, but maybe control V for you if you're on windows to paste them down here. So we've got arrow up, arrow down. My arrow up and arrow down are going to be placed next to my title. So I'm going to drop them here. And I'm going to kind of move them out of the way a little bit because we want the width of our component to be somewhat adaptable based off what sort of a screen it gets placed on. So on desktop, the width of this would be much larger and on mobile, it'll be much smaller. Cool, now we have everything that we need. What I might do, I might actually just replace body section with some lorem ipsum text just so that we have more text to work with. So I'm going to copy and paste some lorem ipsum over here. I also want the width to be fixed and you'll see why that is in a second. There are two different ways to do that. You could either just go down here and open up the three dots on type settings, select auto height. You can see as soon as I press this, the width box becomes active. So I can actually just go over here and type in a custom value. I'm going to press 320 and just make it small for now, just so that we could see the whole lot in view. So we have our bit of a body text over here. So we're going to just put that aside for now. Let's go ahead and use other layouts to create our title and we'll add the body in afterwards. 
The way that we do that is relatively simple. I'm going to select the two chevrons, so the arrow up, arrow down. I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard to turn them into an auto layout. You know, there are now an auto layout because the icon has changed and the layer has changed. I'm just going to rename them to arrow. You can rename by either pressing Command R or Control R on your keyboard or just double clicking on the name over here. I'm just going to rename this to arrows. I'm going to make sure that they are six pixels away from each other. If I was to zoom in over here and double click on one of these guys and hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and hover over the next item next to it, you can see the value is now on six. And you can also see the value is six over here. That basically defines the gap between these items over here. So we're going to leave at six. We're going to center our uh, alignment of the auto layout and we're basically done for the arrows. For the title is relatively simple as well. We're going to basically select both my title and the two arrows like this. And I'm going to press shift A again on my keyboard, or you could just go up here and press the plus on other layout and that turns them into an auto layout. I again want to make sure that these guys are centered with each other and we're good. I'm going to rename this to accordion top. So far, so good. So there are a few different problems with this at the moment. So it, it might look like it is responsive, but it's not. So I, I actually want this to be responsive. There are a couple of ways to do that. And we're going to go through them just to kind of explain what's going on here. So first of all, why isn't this responsive? So you can see the bounding box moves around. However, nothing about this element or component does. So I'm going to press Command Z on my keyboard to reset that. And we're going to have a look at what's going on over here. In order to make this responsive, if I was to select this, you could see its wrapping value is currently on hug. Hug basically means hug the width of the title. It's, it's usually good when you want the components to sort of grow or shrink like this as I type in here. Depending on how much space I have over here, you can see that my component gets bigger or smaller. As a matter of fact, let me do a very quick thing as well. I'm going to just temporarily provide a fill color for this and we'll chuck fill at this gray. So hopefully you guys can see it. And I'm going to add a fill color for these two and I'll, I'll remove these at the end. It's just for demonstration purposes. So let me change this to red so we can sort of see what's going on now. So we got this at hug. We've got all of this space over here and then we've got our arrows at the end. Now, where does the space come from? Initially, when you have all of your items aligned to the left or to the right or whatever, and uh, if I press this three dots over here, you could get the advanced auto layout options. My contents are packed. So basically they're just like packed to either side. We'll, we'll explore what that means in just a second. There is this gap between them at the moment, right? So this is basically the horizontal space uh, depending on how you have your auto layouts. If you had a vertical layout, this would be your vertical space. So we've got ours on horizontal. So we've got a horizontal space between them. So one way to fix the issue over here is to move this to the maximum amount that we want the text to get to the arrows. So you could go anything from zero to whatever that you want. In my case, I want eight. Now you can see the space between my text and the arrows are eight. And it kind of looks like your problem is solved, but it's not. We have the width of the entire item at hug. So again, like hug means hug the amount of space that my content need, and that's it. So we want to change this to fixed width. And while we're on fixed width, as we increase the size over here, you might think that the chevrons or the arrows should move with it, but they're not at the moment. So let's go ahead and fix that. So there are a couple of ways to sort of fix this issue over here. One is to simply go back to the advanced settings, change packed to space between. And what that does, that basically assigns an automatic horizontal spacing between, between the two items. So if I, if I do this, the horizontal spacing is automatically calculated. So if, I, if, if you have a look over here as well, it's, it's on auto. This kind of works. However, there is a problem with this. So if I was to, for example, let's just say you might think that that works. But the problem that this would cause is as I shrink this down, my content doesn't automatically or gracefully resize it itself and it doesn't basically put itself on two lines. This approach would be good if, for example, your design requires a developer to provide ellipses once your text goes beyond the number of characters that you're allowing users to input. But in my case, I want the text to sort of gracefully resize and fall into a second line. So how do I fix this? I'm going to command Z. I'm going to change this back to packed and I'm going to make sure that we're on eight. Another way to sort of fix this issue is if I was to select this the items inside the other layout, you could still see that I still have control over how I want these to sort of behave. In my case, if I was to select the text over here, I could change this from hug to fill. Fill basically means fill the amount of space that's available to you based off the fixed width that you have. So in our case, 438. So both of my items now belong within that 438 pixels. The behavior on the text at the moment is on fill. So fill as much space as you have available to you 
and then with this one is unhug which is hug the content that you're wrapping inside of you so let's go ahead and do a few things first of all let's test this out you can see as i resize my item the title now gracefully sort of goes onto the second line. So this, this makes this very, very nice and sort of flexible. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to leave this on fixed. I'm going to get rid of the colors. Boom. There we go. So no more colors, but they still behave exactly the same. The second thing that I need to do is to combine the body to the title. And to do that, it's very, very simple. I'm just going to select my auto layout and I'm going to select the body underneath it. And I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard. And now I have myself almost an accordion. So let's just go ahead and fix a few things. So one thing that I want to do, I want this to behave exactly as my title over here did. So as fill. So I'm going to change the behavior value to fill. It's now on fill. So if I was to resize this, my text would shrink, but there is an issue because as you remember, if we built this on fixed, you can only have fill if you have an outer sort of parent layer. Previously, this was the parent, but now the parent is the new other layout that we've created. So now we could change the behavior of this from fixed to fill container as well. And if I was to go ahead and resize this, you can see we have ourselves a relatively responsive other layout accordion. I'm just going to rename this to accordion. Great. The next thing that I want to do is to fix this gap between them. I want the gap to be at 12. And I also want a divider underneath the accordion item. So when I stack accordions on top of each other like this. I want a divider over here just to make the legibility and, and readability a little bit easier. Now, before we go there, though, let me just showcase some really, really cool things about other layouts. One thing that's really cool about other layouts is the fact that I can hide and show items inside my other layouts. And it basically takes care of resizing the element for me. And this is a really, really powerful technique for when later on we learn how to build actual components out of our auto layouts, which we'll get to in, in the next couple of videos. But just kind of want to kind of showcase this now just so that you guys can see. And in the exact same way, I could go to my arrows, hide one of the arrows or hide this one. And you can see my auto layout basically takes care of resizing and filling in the gaps where it sort of needs to. Now that we got this sorted out, let's go ahead and deal with our divider line. There are two different ways to do the divider line you can basically utilize the auto layout directly from here or you could create a line like this and create another auto layout select the line and just go on fill container and then you could again go back here change the value of this from fix to fill and you have yourself a responsive auto layout that's one way to do it because i don't want to add another layer of uh, auto layouts into this and make this more complicated another way to do it is to basically calculate how much spacing you want between each element so i want a total gap of 32 between my two items and between the 32 I want a total of 16 pixels of gap between my component and my breaker line or my HR line and, and actually before I do that let me go ahead and add a fill so we could all see what's going on over here I'm going to add a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom and in a new version of Figma one way to add strokes and I'm going to chuck the strokes on the outside make sure that it's on the outside I'm going to select my outline color which is over here and I'm going to select where I want that outline to appear. I just want it to appear at the bottom like this. And if I was to reduce the background color of my fill, you get to see the outline color over here. Hopefully you can see it. And by doing this, if I was to get rid of this, if I was to basically stack my auto layouts on top of each other like this, you can see I automatically get the break line between them. And now I can just go through and get rid of that fill color so we can see what this looks like in action. And this is what this looks like. And just like I showed you guys before, I can show hide my paragraphs to sort of achieve that other layout look and feel. Cool. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm actually going to uh, increase the padding from 8 to uh, 16. Sorry, my math was a little bit wrong over there. I want 16 so that I get the uh, I get like a total of 32 pixels between each of these elements. Now that we have 16, let's go ahead and put, put our accordion together. So we're going to create a group of accordions. I'm just creating my first one, second one. I don't want any gap between them. And then I'm going to press Command D to repeat the same action. So we got three accordions now. I'm just going to quickly also just add some dummy text in here. How do I sign in? Bottom one is how do I reset my password? The last one is, and let's just add different bits and pieces of Lorem Ipsum. One last thing that I want to do is to select all of my accordion elements and I'm going to make these into auto layout just to showcase again the power of auto layout if you set them up properly. So I'm going to select all of my items, press shift A on my keyboard. You can see it's currently on hug. That's just a default behavior. I want the width to be fixed and I want the width of each of these elements to be on fill to again create a responsive set of auto layouts. Later on when we learn components, even this step becomes a little bit easier. But for the sake of this video, 
video, I'm going to select my layers. So I'm going to select this, hide it. I'm going to select this and hide it. And I'm also going to select this arrow and this arrow and hide both of those. And I'm going to select this arrow and hide this. And all of a sudden we have our accordions. Let's just rename this to accordions. As you can see, this is completely responsive depending on where you want to place it. So for us, we're going to place it within our grid between this and this for desktop. And on mobile, we could just create two different variations of this. Paste it here. For example, imagine you were handing this over to a developer. You could showcase both a fully closed and an open sort of state. So I'm going to come back over here, close it, hide this and show this. And there you go. You have yourself your accordions. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe as that would help me out a lot. I've also recently designed and built repixel.com where you could connect with me or contact me if you'd like to do so. We also now have a newsletter that you could sign up to from repixel.com and feel free to follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you would like to stay connected. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.